Hi, I'm Arth, and this is RimWorld, a social sim where the focus is less on being the most efficient stra strategist possible and more on social storytelling through your crew and characters. Though there is a little bit of focus on efficiency, the more that you play this game, the easier it becomes and the more you rely on the storytelling of the game itself. Each of your crewmen all have their own likes and dislikes. They will like each other randomly, they'll like their terrain, their rooms, they'll talk with each other, they'll get upset with each other, and they'll affect each other's mental health. As their mental health uh, improves or deproves, they'll either get uh, improvements such as crafting speed and efficiency or they'll slowly go insane and they'll do things like beat up walls, beat up each other, attempt to kill each other, or dig up corpses and display them to each other causing other people to go insane. The better that you are at this game at creating a viable living household for your characters, the less there is for you to do. As you may be able to see here right now, there's not exactly much input that I'm putting in. The uh, quality of the game moves over ever so slightly to what the game calls is the uh, storyteller, the artificial intelligence director. This artificial intelligence will create a story over time that will, uh, will impact you in specific ways. For example, an animal can go insane while one of your crewmen are outside of your facility, or a uh, a mad wanderer will walk into your encampment and attack people, or an alien ship can crash land in the middle of your compound and you'll have to see who survives, and depending on who survives or dies, everyone may get sad, and then become depressed, and then have mental outbreaks, and have problems and as the game progresses difficulty from this AI will increase the amount of encounters will change there's also a social aspect where you can travel across the world send out caravans to different colonies and and uh, ask them to be your friend or attack them and raid them raiding loot and other places there are a lot of things that you can do in this game and they are all quite fun, especially the interactive storytelling when you create characters that uh, are named after your friends. For example, in my first playthrough I ever played through this game, I didn't create enough food for my colonists, so they started to starve. One of my colonists killed another colonist, ate that colonist, and got food poisoning, and then died, ending my story there. There's a very good focus on storytelling through the game's mechanics, and it can be quite fun and engaging all the all the way through. Well, my my biggest problem with this game is that as you learn how to play it more and more, there's less interaction for you over time as you have a few key uh, elements that you have to do every single time you play. You have to procure food, you have to build recreational activities so that your people can remain happy. You have to keep a basic eye on their needs, but they're generally all fulfilled the same way, which is giving them a table to eat at, some chairs, getting them uh, their own separate rooms, and then building a walled off fortress so that when the AI begins attacking you, you can be well defended. There's also uh, a new character that will show up every now and again. Uh, at the start there'll be like say a certain amount of days since start you'll get a fourth character. There's some consistency in the start every single time that can make new playthroughs drag on a little bit. Otherwise though it's a really fun and compelling experience. One of the uh, one of the best aspects of this game is that it has a very strong modding community. There are more mods to modify this game than there is base content. There's just so much. There's mods that make uh, certain aspects of the game that are boring uh, better, such as 
uh, wandering people can walk into your town with the hospitality mod and they can stay there, become friends, and eventually join your colony. There's also, uh, also in the base game, there is a very limited way of getting new colonists. You can either rescue people who are down from spaceship crashes, which will, uh, join you or just leave and go on their own way. It's not... It's not a uh, guarantee that they will join you. Uh, responding to rescue requests from NPCs that the AI director gives you. This here is just a... I believe that's what I was talking about before. So with a hospitality mod, this NPC could stick around and eventually join you and not have to worry so much. Like you wouldn't have to worry so much about, uh, about getting new people. Uh, in the base game, you can send people out to rescue people or they can call to you and say hey I'm about to be attacked please send help at which point you uh, you can choose whether or not to help them or not there's some of the key ways that you get new people in your in your city and uh, and the other way the really interesting way to get new colonists is to capture people so there's a mechanic in the game called uh prisoners and you can create a prison by just getting a bed and turning it into a prison in a room by itself every bed in that room will then become a prison people who are captured by you will turn into a prisoner that you have to reduce the resistance over time, make sure that they don't go insane and try a prison break because they will eventually do that if they are in a small cramped room with no entertainment. And then you slowly break down their resistance, talk to them, and then convince them to join your colony, which will increase the number of people. At a certain point, instead of becoming more chaotic and more unmanageable with more people, RimWorld does the opposite of the Dwarf Fortress mechanic, where it becomes uh, nearly untenable, but instead it will become much more manageable and easier as you will have more people working for you. Because remember uh, those mental breaks. Mental breaks, for the most part, except in extreme circumstances, act as kind of a... Uh, Unefficient, like an inefficient mechanic. Your characters will become uh, dazed. They'll walk around in a circle. They'll destroy things you've made, making you have to rebuild them, or they'll eat a bunch of your resources, forcing you to, you know, replant your food and generally slow you down. It's only in the most extreme circumstances that they will do anything completely negative. So you want to, uh, you want to keep your people from, you know, going insane, but as you bring in more people, it's not that they're less likely to go insane, it's that you have more people to cover that insanity. There's more people working in your facility, they will overlap in jobs, they'll build up your colony faster, and you will only need more food to handle them, which I believe the AI director tries to handle by giving you more challenging, uh, attacks oh and that's one of the random ai director uh mechanics is turns turn a rabbit insane so anybody who walks outside my facility will be attacked by that until either they kill it or it kills them which is a rabbit it's not very threatening later on that mechanic becomes much more dangerous so as you build up your colony everything becomes more efficient and the difficulty will increase more through enemies becoming uh, more difficult to handle and not so much the management of your colony as you'll have more resources the trading mechanic is also pretty good as well you can you can have uh, characters in this game with a plethora of skills for example they can have shooting melee construction mining cooking plants animals crafting artistic medical social and intellectual if your characters have really bad starting stats such as artistic or they have high intellectual they are actually still beneficial to you because artistic will let you craft uh, tools to handle uh, or to sell to other people like you can craft statues you can craft uh, any number of resources to sell to other people and if they're intellectual they will be 
great at uh, they will be great at researching, which will allow you to unlock new technologies. So there, there is a lot of room for having just randomized stats. Each one of the fires that they have indicate how good they are at learning a task. So they may start off terrible, but they may learn faster than everybody else. So I have yet to run into a game where I have started out with a stat and felt like I was just guaranteed to lose. Even having a low construction colony, I have managed to survive. Now I'm going to show off really quickly uh, a more advanced game to show off what I mean by the, uh, the game getting a little bit easier. So I will be back in just one moment. Alright, I'm back and this is a much larger colony that I've been working on for quite some time. I've also renamed a lot of my people. As you can see, there's an RS-20 there because he died a lot. He keeps getting unburied by mental breaks as people keep displaying him to other colonists, which is kind of irritating. <laughs> but this is a much bigger and more efficient colony. At this point, I have very little input. My work priorities have all been set up, which was really fun to set up at the time. As you can see, there's a lot of ones, twos, and threes. That tells you what priority to give them, and they will do that first before they'll do anything else. So if you set them appropriately to their their skills and their skill sets, there's very little interaction from you at that point. And... Uh, you're mostly at this point watching their story progress. At this point in the game, I have no real input on them except during emergencies. And then I, now I just see how they work on a social level. You know, how much they like each other, how angry they get, how if they rebuff each other. Which is all somewhat of a shallow interaction, but it's still fun. Which is apparently also improved with... Uh, with mods. So the base game, I would say, is worth the purchase. It's fun. It's not It's not just a blueprint for the modding community. There's enough there to get you through several playthroughs. There's also three types to choose from when picking characters. You can choose between Crash Landed, which is what this colony here is and the other colony was, Merchant, where you start off with a completely different tech tree, and different goals and tribal at which point you start pretty much in the stone age and have to work your way up while there's super crazy aliens all around you there's enough in the base game to keep this game interesting and then mods improve it greatly i would buy this game again i will buy this game again full price half price on sale just i will buy it the base game alone is really fun. Modded, it's even more fun. And I give this game two thumbs up. I give it four thumbs up, but I don't have four thumbs. <laughs> if you like this video, uh, let me know. If you have any feedback, let me know. If you dislike this video, let me know. And if you want to see more reviews, give me some suggestions and throw me a subscribe. If I can get to that game, I will, and I will do a review of it. For now, I'm going to peace out. I hope you like this video. Bye.